So looking further, you know, each of these uh, individual uh, TFT, it uh, looks uh, something uh, like uh, this. So uh, what you have is uh, equivalent of a of a channel uh, channel last or a gate first uh, process uh, which is uh, used over here. So the first layer you deposit uh, is this uh, gate uh, layer and then you have this uh, gate uh, insulator. So this would be your uh, gate uh, oxide and then you deposit this uh, channel uh, layer which uh, has been amorphous uh, silicon primarily and then you deposit the uh, source and uh, drain uh, region. So it's uh, it's uh, made uh, very differently as compared to a normal transistor such that you full deposit your uh, gate uh, electrode and then deposit your gate oxide on the top and then deposit uh, your channel. As compared to uh, in a normal logic transistor where you f you'll have your channel in your substrate and then you'll deposit your gate oxide and then finally your gate. So it's a reverse process flow that the it is used for making these uh, thin film uh, transistor and uh, shown here is uh, uh, one of these uh, thin film transistor in uh, more uh, detail. So you can see there is this uh, gate line which was deposited first and then you have this gate insulator. The material over here which is uh, used is this metal oxide and the most uh, uh, promising metal oxide for use in this play is this uh, indium uh, gallium uh, based uh, zinc oxide also known as IgZO. So these indium and gallium are dopants into this uh, zinc oxide so it's a high conductivity uh, amorphous uh, metal uh, oxide and uh, that's one of the materials uh, which is uh, used to replace amorphous uh, silicon and then you have these uh, source and drain which are uh, deposited together and then etched uh, separated from uh, each other using this uh, etch pattern. So the difference between uh, the key uh, difference why people are trying to remove replace uh, these uh, amorphous silicon with uh, either this uh, IgZO which is a metal oxide or this low temperature uh, polysilicon is because of this uh, higher uh, mobility. So uh, amorphous IgZO has uh, you know much higher mobility than amorphous silicon and then uh, low temperature polysilicon has higher mobility as even higher mobility as uh, compared to IgZO. So amorphous silicon mobility maxes out at uh, one or two centimeter uh, square per volt second. Uh, IgZO gives you mobility around uh, five and maximum of uh, 10. And uh, low temperature polysilicon, it gives you on an average a mobility of uh, around 60, but it ranges between uh, 50 to 100 uh, centimeter square per volt second. So uh, another uh, important thing about uh, this uh, as we talked about LCD versus uh, OLED another very important uh, requirement uh, uh, for uh, OLED based display is that you want uh, this uh, TFT should be capable of uh, supplying a very stable current. So this current should be stable uh, both when it's uh, high and uh, when it's uh, low. So for uh, OLED based uh, display, the only uh, material that can work is this uh, low temperature polysilicon. So this low temperature polysilicon is the only material of choice uh, for uh, OLED uh, based uh, display. The reason is that both these amorphous silicon or these metal oxide, they are amorphous uh, materials. So both of these are amorphous uh, materials and uh, they have uh, trouble maintaining supplying the stable current uh, at uh, low current uh, level. So there's a lot of VT instability and there's a random uh, capture of uh, electrons which happens uh, in these amorphous uh, materials. So especially when your uh, current is low, it uh, fluctuates uh, quite a lot uh, in these uh, amorphous material. So these are ruled out uh, for uh, OLED uh, based uh, display and OLED based display the only option is the use of this uh, low temperature uh, polysilicon. For uh, the LCD based display, people are trying to replace this amorphous silicon with either uh, IgZO which can you know meet the requirement uh, in the near term and you know finally they might migrate to low temperature polysilicon also because it has a much higher uh, uh, mobility. 
So finally, a uh, thing I want to mention is how this low temperature uh, polysilicon uh, material uh, is uh, made. So this is the only material as we saw which is suitable uh, enough to uh, uh, enable this uh, OLED based uh, display. And uh, the reason why it's called uh, low temperature is because this uh, silicon which is used to make this polysilicon material, it's deposited at a low temperature. And then what you do is you convert that amorphous material into a polysilicon uh, material using uh, this uh, process known as a sequential uh, lateral uh, solidif solidification. What it does, it, it's, it's essentially a laser uh, based uh, process. And what you have is uh, you have your amorphous uh, silicon uh, to start with and then you uh, uh, fire it up uh, with a laser and it converts into these uh, uh, polysilicon material with this uh, small uh, grain size then you uh, fire it up with a laser again and these some of these grain uh, merge and you get a larger grain and then you fire it up with a laser again and these uh, grains start to become uh, uh, even bigger and each time you uh, make the grain bigger that improves your mobility in this uh, polysilicon uh, material. The downside of that is that uh, currently they are not um, uh, powerful enough uh, laser uh, available and the reason uh, this uh, process requires this uh, laser uh, limits the maximum size of uh, the display that uh, or the d maximum size of the panel uh, that uh, you can use. So for normal amorphous silicon or these LCD based display people are at generation uh, 10 or 11 which are you know glass panels which are more than uh, 15 feet by 15 feet uh, in size but uh, for low temperature polysilicon because of use of this uh, laser based process people are still operating at generation 3 there are talks of you know people moving to generation 5 and 6 and each each generation what i mean by each generation is that with each generation you move to a larger panel of uh, glass that is used to uh, uh, make uh, these uh, displays and on each of these panels you have uh, multiple of these you cut out multiple of these uh, display and the larger size of glass you use you get an economy of scale and you drive your uh, price uh, down. So this is one of the reason why OLED based displays so far are only used uh, prevalent only in smartphones and if you try to buy um, uh, OLED based uh, TV it's uh, so expensive because of uh, low temperature polysilicon.